Hey everybody, Diabetic Daddy 76 here with another recipe. So tonight we're going to make for dinner a cashew pork loin stir fry. Here in a minute I'll get all the ingredients ready and we can go over the recipe. Okay, so real quick what you're going to need is you're going to need one clove of garlic. You're going to need a half cup of cashews. Uh, I've used them ground up into a meal and into chunks. You're going to need some ginger root. You're going to need some parsley. And of course for the pork we're going to use two pork loin slices. These are about four ounces each. And we're going to go ahead and cut them into half inch strips. I'm going to put onion, red bell pepper, I'm going to throw in some zucchini, and for a nice little treat I'm going to use spaghetti squash. Now normally what you would do is you just stab a bunch of holes in it, steam it, scrape out the guts and you have squash equivalent to spaghetti noodles. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try and cut it and scrape it out and use that in the stir fry. Maybe we'll get the same effect. If not, well, it might be interesting, but we'll see. And last but not least, you're going to need one teaspoon of olive oil. Now for those of you who have never used spaghetti squash before, it's a regular squash, but the innards of the squash, once you take out all the seeds, carry the consistency of spaghetti noodles after they've been cooked. Now, for this particular stir fry, I wanted some short noodles and some long noodles. And what I mean by that is I kind of wanted some that look like they've been chopped up, and I want other ones that are going to be long. For those of you who haven't cooked before with this stuff, it's actually really easy to do. Stick a couple forks in it, microwave it for five minutes, pop it open, scrape it out, there you go. Now, what I'm trying today is just scraping it while it's raw and adding it to my stir fry mix. Now, I've already done my short noodles. If you want short noodles, what you'll do is you'll scrape from top to bottom. The long way will actually make the short noodles because the strands actually make a spiral. So if you want your longer noodles, you've got to go from side to side. And I just take a spoon and I will dig it out. And what I will get is something along the lines of noodles here. Let's see if you can see here or not. So just makes little noodles. We're going to add that into the stir fry. And maybe it'll be awesome. Maybe it won't. But I think it's worth trying, that's for sure. On another note, went to the doctor today for a follow-up. Not a follow-up A1C, but just a follow-up to monitor my progress with what I've been doing. And it's been one month since the last time I went. And in that month, I'm down 10 pounds. My blood pressure went from 138 over 85 to 122 over 68. My energy is a lot better. My Overall health, as far as my doctor can tell, has greatly improved. The consideration is being made to either lessen the dose of my medication or to take me off it completely. I think we'll find out here soon enough. But hey, this stuff's working. Good news, you know. And I feel great. I feel wonderful. I'm eating very well. I'm enjoying the food I'm eating. And this weekend is my child's birthday. So somebody might ask, well, what am I going to do about the birthday goodies and treats? What's the paleo secret that I'm going to use to survive that day? And the secret is this. I am going to eat whatever I want. My kid's birthday, I'm going to enjoy myself. She's going to enjoy herself. We're going to have a good time. All right, let me get back to making this food. I figured that since it's been a while since I post a video, I'll go ahead and share some of what's going on with me since the last I posted the video. Now, like I said earlier, I went to the doctor today for a follow-up scheduled my next A1C, which is in a month and a half. She offered to take it today, but my insurance will only cover it on the three month basis, so not gonna happen. But I know the results will be good. I can tell you that right now. I can, I can feel it in the way my body reacts to these wonderful foods that I'm eating. There's a lot of things I've changed in my daily life and my diet over these past few weeks after meeting with my naturopath and my dietitian. Which again, many diabetics, they shy away from dietitians because they've been told by so many dietitians they need to be on a high carbohydrate diet. You just need to look for the right dietitian. There are dietitians out there who are far more educated in the field of dealing with diabetics and those who are hypoglycemic than others. And those people, in my opinion, can offer some very valid and very sage advice, which I still stand by my rule of thumb of eating between three and five pieces of fruit a day. If you want to be careful about that, I don't mind that myself. Choose something on, that's low on the glycemic index. What I have been doing though is I have started taking additional vitamins 
at the advice of my naturopath. He's also an MD. So I've started taking some chromium and magnesium. According to my doctor, a majority of people here in the United States are magnesium deficient. I'm also taking vitamin D3, but that was my choice because of my working so many long hours in the nighttime. I'm not getting a lot of exposure to the sunlight. Not to mention the fact that I live in an area that's got very, very cloudy, dark winter days. And we are currently experiencing spring weather in spring, which is just absurd. So I'm also taking B100 multivitamin. I am taking cinnamon, which actually helps the body metabolize sugar a lot faster. I take vitamin C, of course. All of these vitamins here are actually reinforced by my diet on the paleo diet. My intake of these vitamins is actually significantly higher than the average American would be eating a regular 2200 calorie diet. We'll see if the added vitamins are helping much. I know that I feel better. I've also started drinking green tea and I'm actually drinking it in lieu of my coffee, which those of you who have seen my videos know I love my coffee, but I have replaced my coffee with green tea. I'm actually drinking, I would say anywhere between four and five cups of green tea a day. And I am pleased with it. There is a study that was done out of Purdue showing that regular consumption of green tea actually helps fight uh, cancer causing cells. What I've been doing is I've been brewing it here at home in these 16 ounce bottles. I store them in the fridge and I drink a couple of these a day. It's actually really nice. It's part of my water intake also. So I get a little bit of caffeine, which I sure love my caffeine. I get the health effects of the green tea. No sweetener added. I also help reach my water goal. So, which right now is roughly five quarts a day. It's a lot of water to drink. Now, as you see right here, what I've done is I've already started mixing in. I'm just doing the vegetables right now because like I said, my wife is a vegetarian. So I am going to go ahead and make it vegetarian first and then in another skillet, I'm gonna go ahead and fry the pork up. I haven't added the cashews yet, but what I have done is I've added the ginger. I grated some ginger, garlic cloves, the oil. I did add some of the larger chunks of cashews and let them saute for a little bit longer. Then I put these in here. Now I'm gonna add some soy sauce in a bit and I'm gonna add the rest of the cashews to this dish as well as to the pork when I cook it in the other skillet. All right, so now I've got my other skillet out. Add a little bit of oil, just a little bit will do. And then I'm gonna add some of the cashews and some of the pork. So I'm browning the meat and what I've done is I've added the olive oil, cashews, of course the meat, and then a little bit of soy sauce. This way it makes it equally flavored to the vegetables. So it's uh, so it blends well when I mix the two. And that way my wife can eat her stir fry and the kids and I can eat out. And everyone's happy. Yay! So here's the finished product. We got the pork, the veggies, we got the squash, zucchini, onion, cashews. And you may be able to see the spaghetti squash actually looked like it came out very well. It has the consistency of lo mein noodles. There's some right there. And that's exactly what I was going for. And how this food is calling to me. So this is Diabetic Daddy 76 saying, have a good night, stay healthy. Okay, look, I don't mean to pat myself on the back, but that was actually the best stir fry I've had in a long time. I'm putting the recipe below. The spaghetti squash was an amazing treat. I think it made all the difference in the world. So hey, I encourage you guys, try it out. You don't have to use pork. You can use pork, you can use chicken, you can use turkey, whatever you want. A good lean meat. I say try it out. I thought it was extremely delicious. There's none left. Did I do that? Okay, for real this time, Diabetic Daddy 76 saying y'all have a good night and stay healthy.